we evolved from where we were to where we are today. As a, as humans, we evolved. Um, but if you look at the picture closely and you see the last guy, he's very close to being back to what we were. So you know, we don't walk straight anymore, for example, right? Uh, but that's <coughs> evolution. Uh, they say there is another industrial revolution that has started with all the technology changes that are happening today. And we are a part of that. And we are, in fact, the pioneers of that. We, in the UX field, we need to drive that uh, change. With the growth of the human and mankind, there is another growth that has happened, which is within organizations, which is a very interesting growth that has happened. And I specifically like this picture. Because when I had started, I was you know, below. I was a team member. As a designer, I was considered a team member. I was never a design lead. Then I became a design lead, but I was still under a team manager. Somebody managed me. Today, I'm a design lead who's managing a uh, team managing a team and managing a product. So I'm way above them. And that's the change within two decades that has happened in Indian organizations. From becoming a designer, I've become a chief UX strategist. I love the designation, by the way. But it also involves a lot of responsibility and a lot of answerability to the business, which I need to internally give. What was the world then when I had started? You know what? There was no financial crisis in the world two decades ago. The globe was very happy. Uh, there were no markets crashing. We were all in a very peaceful state. This is what we used then. They were smartphones. They were not called smartphones, but they were still smart. Um, they did what they were supposed to do. And if you interestingly notice the design of the phones today and then, not much has changed. They're still rectangular, the same ergonomics. Uh, they haven't become circles and squares yet, right? So uh, they still do what they're supposed to do. This is the 2007 Facebook page. It said Facebook is a social utility that connects you with people around you. It does exactly that even today, right? So Facebook hasn't changed too much. This is what people used to tell me when I used to go to them two decades ago. This is actually my first project. I was given this page and I was told, clean this screen and make it look pretty. And that's exactly what I did two decades ago. That was my job as a UX designer. There was no UX designer, I was just a designer. This is what I was told when I used to go there. I've been told that I need to talk to UX people. What do you do? So uh, they knew there's something called UX, but they didn't know what to expect of me. Was I a Photoshop designer? Uh, was I meant to just change the fonts and the colors? Uh, at what stage was I supposed to be called in? It was also very vague. So what has changed in two decades? Do you guys think anything has changed or do you think it's all the same? So there's a sea change. This is what I did then. And I'm going to talk about the changes through some projects that we've executed within our organizations. This is what we used to do then. This is one of the pages that we had done where we only did the layout of the page. We did a very two-dimensional job, which was a graphic layout. There had to be a banner on the top. You know, details like maybe not a yellow balloon, maybe a red balloon. Um, why is the read mode button there? Why is the color blue? Other decisions that I used to take, even about a decade ago, forget two decades. What do we do now? It's not just the device that has changed. Of course, we've changed from a website to a mobile app now, which is also a big change. But there is a design thinking that has changed. And I'm going to demonstrate a few examples of projects that we've done where we have not just changed the graphics, but we've brought a change in the way the product was being envisaged. Let's look at this. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. This is an Android app that is live and running. It's called Crispy. It is by uh, Hindustan Unilever, H-U-L. A little background on the app. This app is an entertainment app for tier two of India, which means like a, a Jharkhand and a Varanasi and a Merad, which are media dark agent, uh, places. Why are they media dark? Because eight to 10 hours, there's no electricity there, so they can't watch television. How do they get entertained? They get entertained by using their mobile phones. They charge their mobile phones and they consume entertainment material on their phones. So this app helps them download snippets of movie trailers or songs. Within them are embedded HUL ads. So for example, if you're watching a Dilwale song, within that you have a Latin ad, which you don't mind seeing, but that is what HUL's proposition is. Now, what was it that we brought to the table? 
we actually went to Varanasi, Meerut, small towns, small villages. We studied how people actually behave with their mobile phones and internet. And we realized that they are a a bunch of people who are damn mobile savvy. They know every function of the mobile, but they're also very internet conscious because they're all on data packs. They take 20 rupees data pack, they keep their mobile data off throughout the day. At night, when they reach home, they'll turn their mobile data on, they'll look at all the WhatsApp messages, they'll uh, browse the internet for about 10 minutes and switch it off. So they're very, very price conscious. And now, in such an environment, how do you play an entertainment app? Right, where they need to actually buffer data. And they're also on slightly slower connections than main cities. So they need to buffer data. And they need to view uh, entertainment. And they also are very conscious. So we then said that, you know, um, and by the way, all of these decisions were, take, were taken by our teams, not by teams within HUL. We as UX designers decided all this. So we said, you know what, you need to download these songs. You don't need to real-time play them. You can never real-time play them in a place like Varanasi. Now when you're downloading these songs, what happens? He's very conscious. I told you he's got only 10 minutes to look at his WhatsApp messages, to uh, browse uh, video here, download video here. So you have to make the most of those 10 minutes. And the other problem that they had is, when they download video, even we don't know where those videos go. We go looking for them, where is my downloaded video? Is it in my uh, mobile storage memory? Or is it in the hamburger menu somewhere? I'm lost, right? So imagine those people, they have no idea where they downloaded our videos have gone. So we created an interface where if you see the bottom, it's got my video downloads. The moment I put a video on downloading, this yeah. um, it swipes up and it starts telling you, you know, your video is downloading. I can swipe it back, I keep browsing, I'm utilizing my 10 minutes. I keep browsing, I keep putting them on download. And what's the beauty of that bottom? It tells me two or three, three or three. Wherever I am, on whichever screens, it's always telling me how many videos I have put on downloading, what is the current status. If I've downloaded three, the moment it says three of three, I can switch off my mobile data. So I am giving him the power to know where am I in the download status, switch it off when I don't need it. Another interesting thing that we did. Can you start downloading, when you're very internet conscious, data conscious, can you start downloading without knowing what song is this. So, because you're very data conscious and your download you know is going to take some money, you want to be sure that this Mast Magan song is the one that you want to download. So then we introduce something called, if you look at the bottom, video thumbnail preview. So it's a frame by frame preview of the song which I can swipe and without downloading I know exactly what song this is and then I start my downloading process. And this is the value you as a UX designer have to start bringing to the table. It's not about the graphics and a layout. It's about the thinking of what your user is trying to do and how can you achieve it through your solutions. Let me give you another example. Uh, this is the first bank in India which is going to open your account without your walking into the branch. Nobody will ever come to collect your documents. It's a mobile, online, only digital account opening. Uh, doesn't happen in India yet. This is the first bank that is going to do that. Uh, going to be launched very soon, maybe next month. Now, we, have, we are the guys who help them envisage the product. They only had a brief that you know, we have an app that helps you upload, uh, open an account. These are the three steps that you need to take to open the account. You take your photos of you know, all your documents, your PAN card, Aadhaar card, passport. You upload them, you uh, fill in a form about yourself. Then you verify yourself on a video call. So you get on a video call with the bank executive, you verify yourself and done. Your bank account is opened. You don't need to walk into a branch anymore. Now how did we add value? And I'm going to talk about details here. When they said take videos, take photos and upload, interestingly, the prototype that we had made said that uh, you know, your Aadhaar card has two sides. It's got the front and the back. You're supposed to take picture of, the, of both the sides. It used to say, keep your Aadhaar card ready. Instead of that, it said, uh, take a picture of the front side of your Aadhaar card. After he said, okay, it would give him, you know, a screen where he takes a picture and it would get him back to that screen saying, take a picture of the back side of your Aadhaar card. When we actually went, uh, did the prototype testing with users, we went to users really in smaller towns because that is where this is going to be more applicable, where the bank doesn't even have a branch. We realized that, you know, people didn't even read. People don't read. We all know that. Uh, they thought there's an error and we need to take the picture again. 
They didn't realize we were trying to tell them to the front side and the back side. The only change we did was, we said, after he had taken this picture, we don't take him back. We say, now take a picture of Adharkar's other side. So we don't confuse him by saying the front side and the back side. We just say, you know, you've taken a picture of one side, just take a picture of the other side. Problem solved. What is the other thing that we did here? Um, so we all know our Aadhaar cards have a shape like this. We saw when people started taking picture, they would keep their card like this, they would hold their phone like this and try and take a picture, which was very unclear. They had to actually hold the phone like that. So all that we did was, just the moment they held, the camera mode was on, when they hold the camera, or the phone like this, it gives them a message, please hold your mobile camera and landscape and click the image. And the message doesn't go till he does this. The moment he does this, the message is gone. When he does this, the message is back. So it just, it simplifies. It tells him exactly what he's supposed to do. Instead of giving him an error message or giving him a help text beforehand, just when he's in the process of doing it, we tell him what to do. Another interesting thing. So remember, this is for tier two, right? And this is mostly men. And the executives on the bank side are mostly women. So um, in the prototype, after the step of tell us about yourself, the verify on video call used to automatically start. And we, said, and we saw disaster there because, you know, people said that we actually did a live testing of this. And we saw people are sometimes sitting in their night clothes at home. They're sometimes sitting only in a vest and sometimes bare chests are seen. Right? Which is very embarrassing for an executive of the bank to be conversing to. So we said, no, we can't directly start a video call. We had to introduce a screen saying, you know, your account generated, continue video call, where he clicks this and then starts a video call. So he takes a conscious decision, now I want to start a video call. So we are empowering the user to start a journey. We are all very fond of removing clicks and saying, you know, remove the screen, automatically start, let the number of clicks be lesser. But this is a very good example of where maybe a click, but it means empowering the guy who's going to start a video call to not get embarrassed. So these were examples of how we have moved from a graphic layout of a website to envisaging a product, its journeys, what features the product should have. In fact, so much so that we have started um, UXing services. So we are working for a hotel where we are telling them, you know, what's the customer experience of your hotel? What's the wait time? Are people happy? Are they happy with the ordering menu? Are they happy with the way the tables are laid out? So, um, very interesting findings. We were working with uh, uh, the Marriott, and we did this study in the US, and we did this study in India. It was, the interesting finding was that in the US, the finding was that people wanted a romantic dinner, and they wanted a candlelight, and you know, maybe a table for two people, maximum three people, or a bigger family table. When we came back to India and did this um, study, very interesting difference. People had their uh, children around, so they wanted child safe places, even in a five star hotel. So the whole shift was very different. If you're a regular to Marriott, you'd see only in India they have candy stalls in their buffet breakfast. Because this research very clearly said that they wanted to be child friendly places, which was, never came out in the US. Uh, maybe they don't take their children out, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Um, very interesting discoveries though. So UX has moved, has moved on from a graphic layout to a uh, to intangibles, to experiences, experiences of ecosystems, experiences of services. Um, what has changed is methodologies. I know I'm running short on time, so I'm very good, quickly going to go through these slides. We used to work in a waterfall method. We don't do that anymore. We're all agile. In fact, forget agile. We're all on lean uh, methodologies now. We quickly learn, build, measure. We don't wait for requirements to come. We don't, the developer doesn't wait for us to finish designing. We work hand in hand with the developer. And how do we achieve this? These are the last set of slides. We wrestle our influence. We need to have an impact for that we need to fight. As a woman, I need to fight even harder. You know, when I walk into an uh, insurance company and I try and tell them they need to change all their digital products, they say, what do you know about finances? But, uh, and when we start talking, I tell them, you know, I may not know finances, but I know UX very well. So, and, you know, that's where we kind of start our partnership. Design before you code. You can't design after you're coding. 
agile design process. It works beautifully. We designers kind of detest the agile processes because it kills creativity. We don't know how to get into sprints, etc. Sprints are important. We had a lovely talk on sprints a while ago. Sprints are very, very important and we need to fall into the sprint cycles. Spread design capabilities across your teams. Please don't think technology guys can't design. They all can. Content writers are great designers. They all can visualize and design. Spread these capabilities across. Change the organization culture. Only we can stand up and change the culture. So very quickly, my take on UX. UX is not how the app is designed. It is really how the organization will navigate the change to the next decade. It is how the organizations will change their thinking, will change their design thinking. And for all you UX designers, come dip in the era of communication by design. Design can change the way we communicate. Happy UXing. Thank you. A little bit about the details. So, uh, the slide where you show that you have that continue to video call them. I think I would have done the same. Um, but there's a, a doubt here that we are adding one extra step and we might encounter drop offs. So, uh, I mean, I have dropped off at one of these places where the registering for one of drop offs. So, what would be our, uh, you know, let's uh, possible alternate solutions to this? And this is a great solution, by the way, but. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, we often do that. To remove a step, we you know say that you know this is a better way, and we tested this. I don't think you can. Em uh, you have to empower the guy who's going to start a video call. You have to tell him you know what the next step is a video call. It cannot just start because the guy could be he could be driving, he could be on the road, he could be in a bus, he could be in a situation where he can't take the call. Uh, he could be in a 2G network instead of a 3G network for a uh, call he needs to know. Like, uh, in fact, the screen doesn't have that. The next iteration also had things like, uh, please be sure that you're at a good connectivity place and please be comfortably dressed. So we need to conscious, we needed to consciously tell him. So I think this is a screen that's kind of a must. I, I agree. So my question is more on, let's say, user uh, drops, uh, you know, uh, drops off over here. How to, how so, to um, we had a debate, and the debate was, uh, what is more important for us? The user continuing the call after clicking the continue button, or the or automatically starting a call and the user dropping out then and not coming back because he had a bad experience, right? Very much for the talk. It's great, um, and nice to see some uh, execution as well. Um, I've been in the industry a bit longer than you actually, and I see my role evolve from designing the interface to designing the process to designing the system to designing the business. Have you seen a similar trajectory? Yes, business is just starting. Um, not so much. Uh, but we're working for a very large insurance company in India. Uh, we've been working for them, uh, with them for about five years. It's now that they call us for their business meetings as well, which was never the case earlier. So it's just about starting. Yes, yes. So you'd be surprised before that product gets registered and the underwriter comes and writes things, they know us. You know, what does the product have to be? What does someone need when they're looking for a health insurance? Should we give him discover and discover? So all of those decisions are being taken by us with them. But just started. When we started with Crispy, the app that I showed you for uh, entertainment. I um, yeah, yeah. So when we had started the concept, we thought we have a change in language as well. We have both Hindi and English. And the name was not Crispy, it was 3G. It came from 2G, 3G. Since the download of videos was free, it was called free cheap. When we actually went and did the research with the users, they were all, and they're a young audience, right? They don't like the idea of having a Hindi app. They think it's below their status. They don't want to tell people that they're using Hindi apps. In fact, some of them also said, Hindi me only I have to ask my parents what it means. So even if they know Hindi, they talk in Hindi, they don't want to show people that they use Hindi apps. The idea of PG was given out or cancelled because they said, I don't want to tell the world that I'm using things that are free. Right? So then we got crispy as an idea. 
So vernacular is great when it comes to Hindi news content. You know, when people want to read serious things, it's news. Uh, but when it comes to, we also did a similar research for e-commerce, for shopping again. They don't want to read Hindi. They don't want to tell people that they're reading Hindi. In fact, a very interesting research we did for a matrimonial site. You'd be very, very surprised. There's an about us section where you need to write about yourself. We saw people don't write about themselves. They're not people, people are not articulate. They don't know how to write about themselves in English. So let us give them an option in Hindi. After three run months of running this feature of write in Hindi, only three people had written in Hindi. And when we did our survey, they said, you know, this is a profile that's going out to the world. We don't want to tell them we don't know English. So there is a lot of social stigma around vernacular languages when it comes to apps like this. Uh, so do you, uh, so do you ever uh, design vernacular apps? Or? We do. But like I said, we've done something for Hindustan newspaper, which is uh, mobile and desktop, which is in Hindi. Because that's news content. But is it about uh, people don't want to uh, people do uh, people don't want to use vernacular language as a medium to you know communicate? Because see, there there are two things aspect to it. I understand Hindi, English, but I'm more comfortable in communicating and chatting or talking or writing in Hindi than I would you know write in Hindi. I can't read and write properly. That's fact. Okay, so now the, the thing that you said is people are ashamed of saying that I I, I write or read in. You know, that's, is, that, is that a fact? I don't know, you guys have done the research. So, so like I said, this is a domain specific thing. If I'm looking at an entertainment domain, if I'm looking at, a, um, at an e-commerce domain, I would prefer English. But when I'm looking at news, when I need to understand something, I would prefer Hindi. So it's it, the choice also changes depending on what I'm choosing and the audience, of course. Yeah, and my research, our, all our research has been in North India. I'm not sure what it happens when it comes to down south. But this is purely all the research that has happened in the north. Can we take one last question? I've already been shown that the time is up. Yeah, you can take one question. Why do you have any that because uh, bank account can be open with the verifying and submitting some proof and some civil research. Somebody has to verify your documents. That's why they come to collect your documents. So we've eliminated the process of someone coming and collecting your documents by getting on a video call to show your documents. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so my question was uh, on the other uh, screen that you just showed. Uh, so was there a reason that you explicitly used like a uh, you know camera and like you actually took a picture because as far as I know, other is just a number, right? So it could have even been just a barcode scan or maybe just tell them to just enter the number. So, yeah. uh, so what the process, the RBI regulation and the process is that you need to submit a picture. So how it happens in the fiscal world is you give them a photocopy, they come and then they uh, verify the photocopy with your actual documents. This is doing exactly that. You're uploading it, and then you're showing it to them in a video conference, which they, because the uploaded image has gone to them, then they verify it against the uploaded document. Okay, but uh, as far as I know, I think uh, uh, the open uh, API thing with the other team is working on it. So no, so if I give your other number to them, how do they verify that the one that I have is the same as the number that I've given? Because the number that I give them will never give them the image. And that's purely an RBI guideline. That if it has to be an online verification, then it has to right be now it's, an it's an RBI verification. Uh, I just brought that point out because uh, Pramod Verma, who is uh, the chief architect of other, uh, I've actually been to his talk in which he said that you actually don't need to you know, do that. So that's uh, probably something. I we don't can take this context that would be in, but yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.